Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to get going and get started on our project. We're going to start uh, extrapolating our data that we need for our machine learning. So if you're just joining me, check out some of the other videos, get your system set up, get your tooling set up so you can get caught up and start moving along with me. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a video of, of your game. It could be video. Now, now what we really want is screenshots, essentially images, but the easiest way to do it is to just capture a video of yourself or you know whatever playing Super Mario Brothers. Now keep in mind guys, everything that we're doing here could apply to any game that you want. It could be any game, it could be any, it doesn't even have to be a game. But essentially we wanna get some pictures of the game so that we can teach the AI what is, what is Mario, what is the mushroom, and we do that by showing it lots of images now the quickest way to get lots of images is by taking a video and busting out all the image uh, frames and that's what we're going to do now. So get yourself a video like I have. it. You can use the video that is on my GitHub repository if you really want to or you can capture your own video. So that's the first step. Get a video. Doesn't matter what format. It can be an MP4. It can be an AVI like I have here. Doesn't matter. Get a video. That's the first step. Okay, let's look at how we can extract all of the images out of our video. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a Python script and we're gonna import the CV2 library. We can then open up the video, kind of like opening up a file using the video capture function. So we're gonna create something called a capture CAP uh, variable. And that's gonna be CV2 video capture and then we're gonna pass in the path to our video. In my case, the path is it's in the same directory. And then I'll come back and explain what these mean here in a minute, but we're gonna open this with a while loop. So we're gonna say while this is open, um, we are going to, uh, I'll skip this and I'll explain this in a moment. We're going to read this item using this cap.read function. This prover pro uh, provides two things. The second one is called the frame and the frame is the actual image data that we want. So if there is no frame, we wanna break out of this loop, it means that there's no data. But as long as there is a frame, we're gonna write this frame. So now going back to this variable here, it's basically gonna be a counter. It's gonna start from zero, and it's gonna it's, it's tell OpenCV to write a new image with this frame data that we just read out. And we're gonna write it in a folder called frames, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it you know 0.png, 1.png, et cetera, and it's gonna increment that. So that's what that does. What this does here, this is really interesting. This is going to let us determine how many frames we wanna skip over by using the modulus operator. So if I put a two, if I say x equals two, we're only gonna get even frames. If I say x equals three, we're only gonna get every third frame and so on. So this is a quick way. If I set it to one, we're gonna get every frame. So this is a really nice quick modulate, uh, uh, way to use the modulus to adjust the number of frames that we get. So let's run it with just all the frames. So we just run this python frames.py. It'll take a second because it's gonna extract all those images out. And once that's done, we can look in our frames folder here. And inside my frames folder, you can now see I have every single frame from my video. So we can use this for machine learning. This is great. Now the only downside is that there's about 5,000 images in here, I think, the last I checked. 5,065 images, so that's a lot of data. That's gonna take you forever uh, if, you wanna, if you wanna extract all the objects and put them in later, it's gonna be crazy. Now for really big machine learning projects, you might need to do that, but for what we're doing here, we're just getting started, we're gonna have to trim this data down a lot. So instead of 5,000, I'm gonna, trim that down a lot. And this is where the modulus comes in. We're gonna set this to every 20th frame. And let me just delete all the frames that I just created. Okay, and let me rerun this code with that modulus operator and I should have a lot less frames now. Ah, okay. So there's a bug in my code. I'm doing the modulus before I'm reading the frame. So because of that, the counter keeps going, but it doesn't actually take the next image out. So we've got to make sure we move this up and extract out that frame on every cycle or else we're going to have a problem there. So let's move that over. 
let's that's why the number of frames went up but the all the frames were still read in so now let me delete all of the frames and let's rerun our code we should have a lot less frames now and if I go into that folder you can see I have 0 20 40 and you can see it's jumping through the video a lot quicker so if I select all now I have 279 images that's still a lot of images for what we're doing here guys that'll still take you some time to annotate all of them so let's do every maybe let's do every 30th I'm gonna rerun this now keep in mind your video is going to be different I'm just doing this for my own video here so I did every 30th one that gave me about oh, I didn't delete the old ones let me do that Okay, I deleted all the images. Now I redid it here. Um, and you can see I have only 186 now. So that's still quite a bit. But what's nice about this is now we're gonna have each, you know, each image is not gonna look very similar. So with video, the frames that are right next to each other, they look almost identical. But you can see now that going from frame zero to, you know, from the first picture to like the third, it's, it's a totally different, you know, uh, image. So that's good, that's what we want. Um, otherwise we'd be annotating very, very similar images over and over again. Um, I'm probably gonna do this one more time with 50, because that's still gonna be too many images for me. And let's see how many images I have now. I have 112, so 112, that's still a lot, but I'm gonna try my best to work with that. So now you can see we still have quite a bit of images and Make sure that you know you try to get some diversity in your images. So here I've got Mario jumping. We've got a pipe. You know, if I go to uh, this screen over here, I've got blocks. I've got a different kind of Mario. I've got the star. So that looks good. We've got some variability. So this is how you can extract the raw images out from your video file that you've uh, created so that we can start doing our data processing. So I'll see you guys in the next video.